So, which bounce is better, the marble or the Super Bowl? And why will the answer to that question actually give you a better understanding of the universe? Now, I hear people immediately say, whoa, you've got to be kidding me. There is no possible way that you can say knowing about marbles and Super Bowls is going to help me understand the universe. Actually, it turns out there are relatively few problems in the universe that cannot be described by hard, bouncy balls in a box. Anyway, back to the question in hand. Which bounce is better? Well, it turns out if you're on a large, hard object, that the bounciness is much of a muchness. Now, I mean, this is also a fairly simple system because how high the ball is, is directly related to its potential energy. It's linear. So how high it bounces after the first bounce basically tells you how much energy you've lost in the process of bouncing. So it bounces mm, 70, 80% of its original height, which means it's lost 20 or 30% of its energy somewhere. And that energy is lost in things like sound and heat and air resistance. Now, for many people, it's kind of surprising that marbles bounce as well as they do. But in many ways, it's also bloody obvious, because in games like pool, you use hard spheres because they conserve the energy of that collision really quite well. Now imagine a game of pool where those balls don't lose any energy on the bounce and make it much smaller. And that's actually a pretty good description of a gas which is kind of important if you're living in a gaseous atmosphere. Or you want to do things with those gases, like build rockets or internal combustion engines or jets and the such like. And then there are other things too. So that's what our balls look like, um, our rubber balls. And this is a sort of representation of, of what atoms and molecules look like. So, you know, a ball is, a, for us, maybe a fairly reasonable approximation to what an atom looks like. And those atoms can stick together in certain cases. You know, here's a very obvious example, H2O, water. And here's another one, which is acetone, nail varnish remover. And they're stuck together really quite strongly. It takes a lot of energy to break those apart. Now, some of them will actually sort of stick together, um, okay, but not great. So two water molecules actually stick together quite easily by something called a hydrogen bond, but it's not very strong which is why you can boil the water. Um, another very interesting example of something similar to this is these are the base pairs of, or two of the base pairs of DNA. This is guanidine. So this is guanidine motif and a, and a midazole motif. And this is uracil. And the beautiful thing about these is, is the white guys, the hydrogens on uh, one of the charged atoms, which is basically a coloured atom, they like to be, so the white atoms on coloured atoms like between, to be between two brightly coloured atoms, um, two electronegative atoms, and so you can see that these two motifs, they actually fit together beautifully um, to form this sort of triple hydrogen bonded structure, actually quite stable. And that, it turns out, is what is in the middle of DNA. And so these, these are the base pairs, there's a different sort of scale representation. So all those are the base pairs held together by the hydrogen bonding. Um, now obviously you can sort of stack these atoms together in different arrays. So this is this is diamond, made entirely of carbon of course. That's a different arrangement of carbon called fullerene. But it turns out the marbles here, these guys, they're much more akin in the structure to diamond, they're made of mostly silicon and oxygen, not carbon. But the structure is sort of fairly similar, so that when you actually sort of stress, when the, when the marble bounces, you're actually putting energy into the structure of, of the material, and that's actually what's bouncing back. And that's why this is, this is really quite um, a hard material. You actually can store energy in it just as well as these things. It's just it doesn't move as much. It's got a very high spring constant. Whereas these guys, I don't really have a good representation of what these would look like, but it's basically hmm, a very tangled mess of string. If you imagine you get these these atoms and you put them together in a very long string, and then you load them and tie them together, that's basically what this is. And so. Whenever this is actually distorted in any way, all that entanglement 
basically stores the energy and so it's, it, it's that entanglement that means that it wants to go back to its original shape because it's so highly entangled and that's what also gives it its its, its rubbery nature. Cool, eh?